so I have Mr. Trezor. Tre- Trezor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> fucking hell, it's been a long day. So I have Mr. Trevor Stenard with me. How are you? Good. Chilling. The last day of tour is upon us. <laughs> and uh, the excitement is real. <laughs> so what about um, Indonesia is it that you're kind of digging at the moment? I've noticed that you're... Oh, it's To me, I just like, I like the underdog scenes, you know, where... Um, you know, they have a bunch of fucked up equipment, you know, they don't have a ton of money, but it doesn't stop them from having fun and making brutal music. And, uh, you know, I think uh, by and large, a lot, it's a lot more raw than your typical American death metal and brutal death metal. You know, a lot of those Indonesian records, uh, just have a homegrown kind of quality to them. You know what I mean? It's very, it's, it's done recorded in an underdog manner, you know, not... They don't have a zillion dollars to do shit. What about the Blast Fiends? <laughs> Those guys are the craziest fans I think I've ever seen. Right, you know, <laughs> I think that that is sort of a trickle down of my collecting hobby. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it was like 400 people or so when I first noticed their uh, Facebook page. Yeah. And um, I discovered it from uh, Kyle and Jarrell. They're like the two main guys as far as I can see. And um, I just saw them, like, they had Instagram collections of BDM stuff, you know, and so I started being like, wow, these guys are total freaks, you know, trying to collect <laughs> all this shit. And then they're like, yeah, we have this group, you know, Blasphemes. So I started advertising it on our, on our Facebook, you know, and being like, yo, if you guys want, you know, if you're super diehard for this band, this is where you can meet up with other mutants and, you know, <laughs> talk about this shit. They really represented for us, you know, they, they, they were buying... Some of them were buying multiple copies of the album just to help us chart. And they made it like their personal mission to like see us do well in the charts, you know? So it's like, how can you ask for better fans than that? You know what I mean? It's just a, a huge compliment. It's very flattering. And well, you know, now we've put out um, Nightbringers and so many of those guys like stood up for us and bought us, bought the record a million times and all this shit and advertised the shit out of it. We've seen the power of a fan club, you know, what it can do. So, very fucking cool on both ends, I think. So, this is something that's been kind of quite interesting in terms of the, like, the level of violence that's in death metal. You know, I, I buy into it, everyone else buys into it, but why do you think that people think it's kind of... They still support the level of violence if they may not necessarily agree with it, like on the album covers and the artwork and stuff? Um, I don't... I see it, you know... As a, as a necessary piece of the puzzle, I guess, and something that um, I feel like is a part of Black Dahlia and is ingrained in it, you know? And, yeah, and that was the, some of the first stuff that was uh, striking to me was, uh, you know, like hyper-violent stuff like Cannibal Corpse. And I remember reading uh, the lyrics to Butchered at Birth for the first time as a kid when <laughs> I brought it home and just being like, fucking disturbed, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I remember thinking like, wow, how can they do this? But this is, you know, before the internet popped off, too. So now I feel like, you know, the way the world has turned and uh, the internet as well has kind of desensitized people largely to okay. the extreme violence and poop porn and everything else you see <laughs> by the time you're seven on the internet now. And there's kids raised solely in the internet era that are just total scumbags. So, so where do you think death metal is going to go? Like, what, what's the next sort of thing? I don't think it's going to really go anywhere. You know, I think that at some point its popularity will wane again. Okay. You know, I feel like we're in an upswing now. And, uh, you know, it's kind of mirroring the early 90s yeah. with death metal's, like, initial rise. And then there was that lull kind of near the end of the 90s and into the 2000s. Death metal will, will always stay the same and it will always change too. You know, there's always different corners of it that are becoming more progressive, more thoughtful, more artistic. Um, you know, in the last years, I think it's been like a dissonant death metal like Gorguts and yeah. the kind of influence that... Uh, and stuff yeah, like exactly. So, and then there's you know the old school revival. People just want it dirty and and you know with um, HM2 pedals like Entombed and shit. <laughs> and uh, I love that too. And you know, hopefully we can still stick around. You know, we've been looking at bands like Cannibal Corpse and Napalm Death and 
obituary, you know, the survivors from the old generation that still get to stay around and do this thing. So, you know, we've been thinking long term since the beginning of the band. So, I mean, now here we are with the eighth album out. And so it's, I guess it's working so far. I think you guys are like, you know, the, the new kind of cannibal corpse, so to speak. Oh, uh, well, you're making me blush, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I mean, that's like the highest compliment I can hear, basically. They're like, to me, the blueprint and the um, their success is, you know, what every underground band... They are cannibal corpse, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so-, so, finally, do you ever get tired of being Mr. Death Metal? Um, <laughs> sure, you know, and um, it kind of happened when I was doing the column, and I was so, like... Pit, like just laser focused on death metal like i follow labels hundreds of labels i follow hundreds of bands and my whole feed on all facets of of uh social media was just death metal all the time yeah. you know and the other thing is like i've kind of made these certain rules for my column too like it has to be new it has to be from this year you know, just so it has a kind of consistency to it. So I'm always listening to new shit, you know, all the time, all the time, all the time. And um, just after a while, I was like, fuck, man, all I want to listen to is like Starship right now. Celine Dion. Seriously, you know, and I, I like all kinds of music. All You know, I'm not, the, you know, one of those guys that's just like death metal or else, you know, I think I love music, you know, and as I get older, like the more open i become to all different kinds of shit. Yeah, like 80 Chicago and Starship and just like total like dad on the boat butt music. You know what I mean? Like I love that kind of shit. And that's like a world away from... Duran Duran. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, man. Um, my girlfriend's at home right now getting mad because I have all this mail coming in and we have this little apartment in fucking New York now. She, you know, wants to encourage me to keep, you know, to keep this thing going because this is what I do, you know, collect music and, you know, like support bands and shit. But, um, yeah, eventually it's going to be detrimental to our living situation <laughs> for sure. Thank you so much for having a chat, dude. I really appreciate no, it's been it. Fun. Thanks, man. Again.